Okay, in this video we're going to install Windows 7 and um, Wireshark to an Oracle VM VirtualBox. So I'm going to double click on Oracle VM VirtualBox. Um, I'm going to click on, right now i got to click on Tools right here so that I can click Add. I'm going to click on, uh, whoops, that's not what I wanted to. I want to click on New. Type in Windows 7 and then your last name. It's going to be Windows 7 32. Uh, let's do the 64 bit. Okay. Um, hit next. Memory 2048. That's good. Hit next. Hit create. Hit next. Next. Create. Now that we have this Windows 7 right color right there, I double click on it. Wait for it to boot up for the first time. Click on the little folder with the up arrow, and I need to find the Windows 7 ISO file, um, which is right here, Windows 7 SP1, the ISO. Um, if you're not on this, here's how I accessed it. So you go to this PC, you go to the share drive, you go to Main West, you go to Students, AAT, find Cybersecurity in the list, then find the Windows 7 SP1 and hit Open, and then let's hit Start. All right, let's go ahead and let this load the operating system files in here. This install is going to be very similar to when we installed Windows XP, um, but one of the main differences is after this is done, we need to install the VirtualBox Guest Editions and um, Wireshark right away. So this might take just a little bit longer. All right, this is English, English US, that's all correct. Hit Next. Hit install now. And now it's just going to uh, slowly make its way through the installation process. Um, we have to hit accept the license. Click on custom. Click on this disk zero right here and then hit next. Okay, so this will copy and expand the Windows files and stuff. This will take, I don't know, five to ten minutes. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video right now while this happens. As soon as I have to click something, I'll resume the video. One thing to note, though, is do not um, click any keys on the keyboard um, while this is happening. Uh, unfortunately, if you do that, there's the potential that the install will stop itself or you'll go back and you'll have to reinstall over the operating system. The, there's the potential that you can mess up the install. Um, so you just kind of want to take your hands off the keyboard, let it do its thing. Um, yeah, so I'll pause the video right now and then resume it as soon as it prompts me to do something. All right, it is rebooted now after a big installation process. and. During that reboot phase, it's really important that I'm not touching any keys on the keyboard. Um, otherwise, uh, it might actually boot from the ISO file again instead of booting back into the installation process, which would stop the install completely. So I've just been kind of keeping my hands off my keyboard, letting it do its thing. It took about five minutes or so to get to this point. You notice I'm at completing installation right now. Um, it's going to start prompting me for some things in a second, which is why I resumed the video. All right, looks like the computer needs to reboot one more time. Again, where it says press any key to boot from a CD or DVD, do not press any key during that time. We do not want to boot from a CD or DVD. We just want to have this continue along with the normal installation process. So now it's preparing the operating system for the first time a username, go ahead and type in your last name here, okay, hit next. 
Uh, don't worry about typing in a password here. We can just hit next. Don't worry. Uncheck this automatically activate. Hit skip. And then hit ask me later. We're going to change this to central time US and Canada. Hit next. We are on a public. Uh, we can click on home network. This will actually open it up a little bit more. But click on home network. Doesn't matter which one. Um, doesn't really matter which one you choose. Uh, we're going to be modifying some of the firewall settings a little bit later, but um, I don't know, home network seems fine. But if you didn't click home network, it's not going to be the end of the world. All right, and now it looks like Windows 7 is booting up for the first time, which is excellent. Now I'm going to come up here and I'm going to hover over devices, go to optical drives. Um, I'm sorry, devices, and click down here on this insert guest editions CD image. So I clicked on that, insert, and then now I'm going to click on this folder thing down here. Click on computer, and you'll notice my VirtualBox guest editions popped up right there. Double click on that. And we want to run the, I think we can run the 64 bit one right here, VBox Windows Edition 64. Hit yes. Oh, I apologize. We want to run the x86 one, so I double click on the x86. Hit yes. Hit next to continue. Next and install. Check this box, always trust, and hit install again. And once this installs, we're actually going to, I want to manually reboot later. Hit finish. Let's close out of this and then let's shut down this virtual machine. We want to shut it down rather than rebooting it because we're going to, now that we have this Windows 7 right here, I'm going to click on settings. Come over here to shared folders. Click on the folder with the plus sign and the folder path. It's going to be other and we want to browse here to the share drive, main west, students, AAT, cybersecurity, and click one time on this Windows tools and hit select folder. Click on re read only and also click on auto mount. Click OK. Click OK. Now let's double click on this. So we want to uh, the um, we want to install Wireshark to this Windows 7 machine. And Wireshark, the installation files are sitting on the school share drive. So that's what we just did. We just set up uh, this Windows 7 virtual machine so that it can access that folder on the share drive. So we're going to let this boot up here. And then I'm going to click on this little folder right here. I can spin open the network. It might take a second to kind of notice it's kind of looking around for stuff. Okay, there it is. We see this VBox SVR. I spin this open and then I got this VBox Windows tools. I'm going to right click on this folder right here. And I'm going to go to Map Network Drive, and we can just call this thing the Z Drive, which it looks like it's already mapped there, but that's good. And then hit Finish, and hit Yes. All right, it looks like this is all done. And let's just double check. We should be able to go to our computer now, and. says it's disconnected but it looks like when we double click on it um, we have access to it. If yours says disconnected I don't really like that this says disconnected so I'm going to remap this thing so I can right click on it. I can hit disconnect and I'm going to click on this VBox share right click on this map network drive I'll map it to the Y drive and hit finish. 
There we go. Now let's go back to computer. All right, so the Y drive's working. I don't know the Z drive, why it didn't work for me. No big deal, though. Double click on the Y drive. If the Z drive worked for you, then good. Um, this Wireshark, we're just going to drag the installation files to the desktop. Double click on Wireshark right there. Hit yes. Hit next. I agree. Next. 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 Install. This installation process will take a little bit of time. So Wireshark is a program that allows us to analyze network data, specifically packets. So uh, we're going to be taking a look at how information is sent over a network and really diving into the packets that are sent back and forth between computers. So let's go ahead and let this thing install. It's kind of a big program. And then once this install is complete, we're not quite done yet. We're still going to need to um, change the network adapter. From right now, it's at NAT. We're going to have to change that to bridged. And then we're also going to have to set up a restore point. So um, I'm going to pause the video right here, but don't think the video is going to resume. Make sure that you follow this whole video all the way to the end. Okay, it looks like the installation process is done. I'll hit next. I agree. Hit install. Hit finish. It's almost done here. Kind of a big installation process. Hit next. And let's check this box to run Wireshark and hit finish. Hopefully Wireshark pops up for you, just like it did for me. So I can close out of Wireshark, click on the start menu, and hit shut down. Let's shut down this virtual machine. Once this shuts down, we want to do two more things. First, we're going to come over here, and we're going to click on settings. And I'm going to click on network, and change the network type to bridged adapter, and click OK. And then we need to click, again, if you don't have any of these things, you just got to click on tools, and then go to... Um, yeah. Um, we're going to click on this take right here to take a snapshot. Click this. We're going to call this after install plus Wireshark. Hit OK. And now we should be good. Okay. So hopefully you were able to follow along with this. If not, please, um, please ask me and uh, let me know if you have any questions.